Welcome to MRTV's People in XR. This is the podcast that introduces you to the most exciting players in the industry. And here is your host, Sebastian Ong. In this episode of the People in XR podcast, it's my utmost pleasure to speak with Shahar Bin Nun, who is the CEO of the Human Eyes Technologies. Hi, Hi. Shahar. How are you? Hi. Hi, Sebastian. How are you? Very well. Very happy to speak here with you at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. We have met once in CES before. That's correct. Which was really interesting. You showed me your cameras. And, um, well, in this podcast, we're going to go in-depth about your cameras, about uh, the VR industry, how your cameras fit into them, and how you get to be in the position that you are in now. Okay. Being the CEO of a company that is working in yeah, XR, in virtual reality, and all these interesting fields of technology. Okay. So, Shahar, first tell us a bit more about um, Humanize Technologies, the company that you're the CEO of. What kind of products do you produce? Um, tell us a bit more. Okay. So, Humanize is actually um, a 19-year-old company. Oh, it's not like a young startup started yesterday with a new cool product. Uh, it's, uh, it was established in the year of 2000, eight, 19 years ago, by Professor Pelek from the Hebrew University, a professor of uh, computer vision. And um, uh, its main purpose was uh, to provide computer vision solutions, mainly in 3D, uh, to the printing industry oh, really? and display industry. So. Um, it, uh, it was started as a small startup in the, inside the Hebrew University by Professor Pelek. And then we uh, decided to develop, we started to develop a lot of technology related to uh, the printing industry. Um, so we've uh, explored, you know, uh, the life of a startup in Israel is not so, uh, in everywhere, uh, not only in Israel, of course, is not so simple. It's very, very challenging. A small company is trying to develop new uh, uh, new technologies, and we were uh, uh, debating uh, that I, I did not work for Humanize at that time. I joined Humanize only uh, eight years later. So now we are in 2000. Until 2008, the company had uh, at least uh, 20 patents in the field of computer vision at that time. Now we have 70, by the way, already, um, and started working with. Um, uh, solutions for uh, graphic arts and uh, pivoting actually already twice. So in 2004 changed a little bit focusing the technology and in 2008 uh, going into service of lenticular printing. So that was in 2000. Okay, lenticular what, printing. What, what kind of printing is Lenticular there? printing is, um, uh, you know, those uh, little, uh, the, the plastic thing with lenses mm -hmm. that you can have uh, bring print to life. Okay. So you can do uh, changes of the video, you can do also uh, video printing in a way. Okay. Um, I know. Flip images, yes. 3D uh, images in it uh, using the lenses in of, the, uh, of the plastic. And uh, up until now we are considered to be one of the most leading software solutions for lenticular printing and oh. still Companies are buying, printing houses all over the world are buying our solutions. Okay. But uh, quite frankly, it did not generate enough uh, uh, business for us. So um, we went into the service of lenticular printing. We've opened, um, and at that time I already joined the company, we've opened services that you can print uh, little cards uh, by, your, by yourself going online. And we had the service in the US, in Germany, in the UK, uh, and again, generating a very interesting business for us, but was not uh, enough. So we said, what's next? Uh, so we've accumulated a lot of knowledge in 3D, uh, and we decided, okay, let's, let's explore what can we do uh, uh, more. So I was asked by uh, Mr. Benny Landa, who is our chairman of the board. Benny Landa was the CEO and founder of Indigo, was later acquired by HP. The, uh, he's known as the father of digital printing in the world. So he's approached us and says, okay guys, what can we do more? What can we do next? So it was a very interesting time back in 2014 where we said, okay, let's explore what we, what we want to do. Let's see what do we have some advantage of and what are the interesting markets. And if you remember, at that time, fa Facebook acquired <coughs> Oculus and right. the VR started there was gaining something some starting, momentum. Yeah. Traction. There was some yes. traction going on. Yes. <laughs> um, so we so said that can be an interesting thing, but we are a software company. You need to bear in mind we're a 
at that time, a pure software company. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. <laughs> now, that is interesting to know now yes. that I see your now products that you here. See that, it's, exactly. Uh, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then we said, you know something, maybe we can leverage our technologies and the 3D capabilities and the computer vision capabilities um, and develop a software for VR cameras. Okay. The ability to stitch videos together right. and, and, um, and uh, create 3D content. And, um, and we thought that's, that's a nice, n nice idea, but it is one idea. And we've explored actually 15 different ideas, what do we want to do, back in 2014. We narrowed it down quite, uh, quite fast to only two ideas. Okay. Uh, I, I, will, I, I don't want to bore your, your uh, <laughs> viewers <laughs> and yeah. your listeners yeah. with all the 15 things right, and right. also <laughs> with the other solutions. It will be too much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But uh, it was an interesting time for, for about four months. And then we, we said, OK, we will do a software for virtual reality cameras. Okay. But it took us maybe two months more to understand that just a pure software for VR cameras is not enough. And then we, we decided to have a, a, a giant leap. Of, okay. We decided to dive into the very, very cold and deep water of consumer electronics. <laughs> wow, that is and like a huge jump. As in, you have never made consumer electronics before. <laughs> yeah, you, you know you can make the software, but you, you had no idea how to make the hardware. You know, uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a joke uh, in Hebrew, we yeah. say, if you don't have uh, sense or mind, you don't have any worries. <laughs> That's so true, though. <laughs> if, That's you're, true. if you're so stupid, you, you, you don't worry of anything, right? In a way, uh, yeah. uh, as a joke, yeah, uh, it, it, was, uh, it was this uh, decision, let's jump into, okay. into wow. this cold water. We don't really understand what it means, yes. but let's do that anyway. Okay. Why not? Yes. So, um, uh, I remember the discussion at the board of directors trying to convince our board of directors and they, they asked me a very smart questions. Why would a small company out of Jerusalem compete in, a, in, a, in consumer electronics with the giants? And um, I said, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and you know something? I, I managed to convince them and I said, yes, let's, let's do that. Um, and uh, this is how the views camera was, uh, was born. Wow. So uh, we have here in front of us, uh, the, the listeners cannot see the cameras, but definitely the viewers can see uh, yes. um, the views. In this case, it's a views uh, plus camera. So we, so have, two, we have two we cameras have two here cameras in front on of us. Of, in, in, so for all table. of the listeners, you can always check out the YouTube channel, MRTV, because this podcast are also broadcasted as video. Yes. So, 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 so we said, okay, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's focus on 3D because we, we know 3D, we understand 3D. So we decided to do this very, very cool uh, uh, view, views camera, which is uh, for your customers who cannot see it right now, or you, uh, listeners, yeah. it's um, a 3D 360 VR camera with eight full HD cameras, a, a, a stereoscopic pair pointing at each direction. So basically every pixel is being captured by two cameras just like our, our eyes. By the way, the name human eyes was not related to VR, <laughs> and, but it's a very, very it good fits fit. It fits perfect now. fits absolutely perfectly. So you, we, and deliberately, uh, we, are, we have decided to choose all the way up until now, the same distance, the same IPD yeah, of sense. human eyes. Because we wanted to create something. about somewhere in between uh, 58 millimeters yep. to 64 millimeters. Right. This is the average of human yes. eyes distance between each other. So it means that we are capturing the content or the life uh, at the, the same way as we see it. Uh, so we don't see more depth. We don't exaggerate today. It means that after 15 meters, by the way, we don't see depth anymore as humans. Uh, and the sweet spot is uh, somewhere in between two meters to 15 meters. Anyway, so that was uh, the views plus capturing uh, the entire sphere in 3D. Uh, in, every, in, in every direction. In every direction. Um, and uh, because we believe that in order to create an immersive experience, you must capture it in 3D because we see things in 3D. Right. By the way, it's not only it's not enough to just capture it in 3D. We also hear in 3D. For example, when you talk with me, you're on my right side. I know that you're on my right side. If, yes. Even if I close my eyes, That's right. I can hear you from the right side. So we also have four microphones to capture 360 audio in this uh, in, in this uh, uh, camera. 
Um, so 3D and 360 audio all together uh, allows you to create immersive experience, uh, better especially if you're using a good VR headset right. that are enjoying of these feature features. And um, so we have this now in front of us, and this camera, this um, um, 360 3D camera, it looks like, uh, I don't know, like a little UFO, but it's, it's not huge. So right. um, I've seen others, they are like hu huge round balls, right. basically, right? right? But, but this one is like, yeah, I could, I could put it into my backpack, basically. Absolutely. So, uh, so why is that so, uh, as compared to the, the bigger ones right. from the other companies? We wanted from the very beginning to allow almost everyone to create VR content. And we wanted, in a way, to democratize VR content creation. So it was very important for us to really minimize the size uh, uh, of, the, of the device. It took us a lot of effort because one of the uh, challenges with the uh, VR cameras, it has so many lenses and power of uh, computing inside is that it gets uh, too hot, there, therefore it has to be big to, to, uh, mm -hmm. to ventilate, evaporate, yeah. ventilate, to evaporate the heat, etc. But we managed to solve those uh, engineering and be believe me, it was very, very, very difficult. And again, bear in mind, we're a software company. <laughs> I want to talk about this much more later. Yeah. We didn't know what a chip is. <laughs> what, what do you mean chip? Yeah. <laughs> it's all software, no? Yeah, yeah. No. So, uh, so yes, we did, uh, a, 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 I think, a remarkable job uh, for the beginning, and, and the product was accepted very well, even though we had a lot of challenges. One of the things that we um, want, want to say, so, so it has to be also affordable below $1,000. The okay. first camera so was one? only $799. This $799, okay. 799 US dollars, while at that time, we were talking about back in 2016, uh, the cheapest one after us was sixteen thousand dollars. Wow! Was and then, the, what's the name of this sixteen thousand? Uh, it it was a, a, ba a bunch of sixteen GoPros uh, yeah. together with okay. the the Google Jump yes. uh, product. Exactly. You have to buy actually seventeen GoPros, <laughs> put them together. Yeah. That was the only most affordable way after the views uh, uh, camera. That is crazy. And then we had at that time uh, a Nokia for yeah. fifty thousand exactly. dollars, etc. Yeah. We are now in 2016. We're moving forward now to 2019. So in 2016, this came out? In 2016, we launched it, but we actually, uh, again, remind you, a small software company trying to uh, release a very, very complex hardware product. So we had a delay instead of uh, uh, releasing it on uh, October 2016, it was actually released only in March 2017. Okay. We had a, a four months uh, a delay, which was very, very painful for our yeah. customers because they really expected, uh, many, many of them expected the camera already, but they, they still remained loyal to us and waited okay. politely, most of them, uh, for another, uh, uh, another four months. And then we, it was released uh, in uh, March 2017. Uh, when we released it, we realized that it's not actually a consumer product as we thought. We wanted to make it as simple as possible, one button operation, but still you need to know what you're doing to stitch the files. Uh, 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 you need to do it in a computer. Uh, and by definition, this is not a classic consumer uh, product. Uh, later on, we understood that it, this is a prosumer uh, product. Actually, the entire industry, we'll talk later yeah. on about the industry, is still not yet in the mass market of consumers, still uh, in the prosumers and, and, and professional uh, market. But we were a bit naive to, uh, to assume that this product is suitable for regular, for John Smith from Alabama. Yeah. Okay? So um, uh, we gathered the feedback from our customers, uh, and then uh, nine months later, we released the Views Plus which is proudly standing on this table ah, and this still okay. uh, relevant. Uh, so we fixed a lot of things, mainly in the audio and all kinds of things. It's basically the same camera, but one of the, the plus thing here is that you're able now to broadcast live in 4K okay. and in 3D, while the first camera could not uh, uh, do that. Uh, so this is, a, this is the difference between Views Plus, and quite frankly now people are buying between those two cameras, mostly the Views Plus, which is even even though it's a bit more expensive, a thousand dollars and not eight hundred dollars, they buy only the uh, the Views Plus. So um, um, within within time, we understood we understood as as I said before that uh, the mass adoption will take longer than expected. 
the entire industry is still waiting and expecting. Right. And I, I can uh, talk about, if you want, why mass adoption is taking longer, yeah. maybe later on yes, if, you, if you're interested more. with that. Yes. Um, but uh, um, we became, within time, we became uh, a player in this market, a significant player in this market, and we decided to go all the way to uh, a, a very, very affordable, really for consumers, easy to use uh, camera. And this is how the Views XR uh, uh, was born. And, um, and actually it's an interesting story how it was, uh, born, uh, how it was born. We were thinking, okay, what would be the next uh, uh, product? Mm -hmm. And one of my uh, 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 VPs in the, in, the, in the company entered my room one day with a, I, I don't have it here, uh, so that the listeners cannot see it, but I will explain. Yes. <coughs> to the viewers. Yeah, right. Everybody's familiar with these little uh, mini ah. glasses. You can of, put uh, them Homido. on the smartphone, right? You can put them on the smartphone and actually enjoy with a two or ten dollars device yes. uh, a VR headset. You can actually enjoy a very, very right. good. So this is uh, some kind VR of content. cardboard headset. Some these, these yeah. are lenses that you would snap onto your phone, and then you have like uh, the 3D vision if you have two uh, side by side picture. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, yes. This is cool. So he came to me with this <laughs> one. Obviously, we, we added that to every package, to every customer who's buying Views or Views right. Plus, got these uh, okay. li little glasses for free to enjoy uh, his content. Obviously, if you want, they can spend more money on, on, a, on a more uh, higher quality uh, VR headset. But this is a really cool uh, product. He came to me uh, to this room and said, and, and it was, you can fold it. You yes. can fold it so it's closed. And then you can open it. Uh, uh, that way, mm -hmm. so so the uh, people who can see that you can open and close it. So so this is a regular 360 camera, like a Ricoteta at that time, like a, a Samsung here, back to back and everything. If you open it, it becomes right. a VR 180. Right. Let's do ah. a, let's do a, a camera like that. And you know something? After debates of debates of debates of what do we need to do next for the next product, I thought it's an excellent idea. Right. And uh, so we, we took a, a, a 360 camera, changes into a VR 180, and this is how the Views XR uh, was born. In addition to that, uh, you know, it sounds simple, but I can tell you that it's extremely complicated because you need to make sure that the lenses are open and closed thousands of thousands of times. It will be very, very accurate, repeatable, and everything. So on the mechanical level, uh, it, it was a lot of efforts to develop that uh, uh, that system, and uh, but we managed to uh, to do that. Also on the design thing, we were working with a, an amazing design company uh, out of Tel Aviv, and they uh, they were struggling a lot with how do we do that uh, the best way, and they came up with six solutions. This is, by the way, solution number five. The Views okay. XR that's standing on this table is solution number five, and was uh, uh, chosen as the, as the le le leading one. For those, for those who don't know the Views XR, could yeah. you um, just explain to us what this camera can do again? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. Well, what's the, what's the camera uh, is capable of doing uh, today is um, uh, is uh, the two unique features of the camera is a very, uh, a the fact that it is a dual camera. It has two cameras in one camera. So there is uh, may maybe your listeners or your viewers can know that there are. VR 180 cameras, two lenses separated with each other, and then they can ch capture things stereoscopically in 180 degrees. Right, and, and there's a lot, a lot of 360 cameras, back-to-back -back lenses that you need to stitch them together, and then you have a 360, but in 2D. Right. So what this uh, ca this camera is doing is a dual camera. It's a 360 2D cam uh, camera, 2D 360. That when you open the lenses, it opens to uh, a stereoscopic VR 180. That's one a, a unique thing about the camera. The second one, it was the first camera above for, cons for consumers, prosumers, at the level of a $400 device that is, uh, went up from 4K. And resolution is extremely important for, um, uh, for this industry. And I will explain one minute why so. Because you think about, I have a full HD television at home. It's more than enough. Yeah. Why? Why bother more f uh, Full HD? Um, 4K, it's crazy resolution. But you know, with VR 4K, 
It's not so good, it's just an okay resolution. Why is that? Because you take the same resolution and you spread it on the entire sphere. And we as humans, when we see, we see only 90 degrees, 90 to 100 degrees. Um, so you will actually see approximately one sixth of the sphere at the same time. So when you're watching it on a VR headset, you're seeing only one sixth of a 4K, which is already less than 1K. Mm -hmm. But that's not uh, the only reason. In addition to that, you're putting it with uh, a lenses two centimeters away from your eyes, <laughs> basically uh, magnifying every pixel. Mm -hmm. So a 4K is a good resolution, but it's just an okay resolution for VR. Yes. This is why the industry is so hungry for more and more resolution, even though the ecosystem around it cannot uh, absorb such a high resolution. So yes, we identified that issue, of course, uh, and we said we want to go above 4K, we went to 5.7K, mm -hmm. and yes, it's a 50% more resolution, you do see the difference in quality. Mm -hmm. We were the first uh, 5.7, and, and until now, the only dual camera that is doing at 5.7K uh, uh, resolution. So this is what's so unique about the camera, and it is extremely affordable. It's only 439 US dollars. It is uh, working uh, very nicely with the, an application that comes with it, that you can edit it easily, the content, shoot, see what you're shooting, decide on the spot whether you need this scene is good for VR 180 or good for 360, mm -hmm. etc. That's really cool. So I had the chance to try it out. Actually, I brought it to my vacation, and it was it was spectacular. It was really cool to uh, to take those moments in 3D. I went into to Taiwan, and I went to this uh, beautiful landscape, and then I took some 3D videos, and to watch it later at home in 3D, it makes it feel like okay, I can relive that moment. It has something magical to it. Absolutely. I felt. So Absolutely. that was really, really amazing. So for all the viewers now, this is the camera. And now this is the 3D mode. So the, for the listeners, the, the two uh, lenses, they are like, um, how, would, how do you call that? Um, they are not back to back. Like this is back to back, the lenses. Then it's like three, 360. Side, side by side. Right, right. That's the word. And uh, if you open it, then um, it's going to be like two human eyes, <laughs> actually, right? Absolutely. So the same distance as the average human eyes. Right, like this. Yes. And yeah, then you can capture footage in, in 3D, 180 uh, degrees. So yeah, that's really, really useful to decide, okay, uh, do I want to show my viewers like the, everything, just 360, or do I want to show them some moment like in 180 degrees, like 3D, as if they were standing there just with me. So yeah, I used it and uh, I really, really enjoyed taking those videos. Thank you so, so much. So and I we did you, see really the content that this. you created and yeah. very, very beautiful okay, yeah. content in Taiwan and in Taiwan. other places. Yes, exactly. That you did. Really, really cool. So, so well, that is a one of very the things, nice that, for example, that you need to do when you are creating such a dual camera. You need to bear in mind that for a 360 camera, you need to have an overlap between right. the lenses. So it's 210 degrees each lens. Uh, um, you, because you need the overlap for the stitching uh, software, right. right? But when you open it, you, you don't need it 210 because the platform of Google, and by the way, this camera is certified by Google okay. in their VR 180 platform. Uh, it has to be 100, 180 degrees only. So in, so in a way, and not in a way, uh, it's a, a variable field of view. Right. So when the, when the uh, lenses are closed, it is 210 degrees. When you open it, it, ha it must be only 180 degrees uh, right. field of view. So uh, that's only one challenge, uh, this on the optical side, that when you create a, a dual camera. Right, so actually you could do even more field of view? You have more? Yes, yes, wow. yes. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Um, but the platform itself, yeah, it you need it, it to yeah. be compatible with the uh, distribution channels. Right, right. Uh, maybe, that's a, maybe that's a good time to explain to your listeners what is the uh, uh, VR industry. The VR industry is built out of four legs, if you will. There is the capturing devices, and we are part of it. Mm -hmm. And there is quite a lot of uh, 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 capturing devices in the market. There is, there is uh, the viewing devices, which are VR headset, and there's hundreds of them. Uh, uh, throughout the world. Obviously, there are leading uh, companies uh, in, in this arena. So there's 
capturing devices, viewing the, uh, devices, but the most important part is how to share that type of content. So we are definitely dependent upon the distribution channels, which is mostly uh, YouTube, YouTube yeah. Facebook, right. Vimeo, right. Veer in China, yes. and, and, and some other companies that are trying to uh, play in this industry. It's definitely the most important part because once you create the content, you want to show them. Exactly. And you don't want only to take a gigantic file, <laughs> give it to your yeah. mom, <laughs> and copy it to her phone, and no, no, give no. her a VR headset. Right, no. It's tedious. Yep. So the best way is to share it through the distribution uh, uh, channels. Um, so the VR 180, we have to rely and understand how they want to accept the files. So with the VR 180, we've been talking with both Facebook and Google and, other, and others to see what is the right format, what is the right size, what is the IPD, the distance that they want to show the, uh, the 3D, and uh, what is the metadata for stabilization, all kinds of other boring yeah. stuff <laughs> that you have to uh, make it uh, uh, work for them. So uh, this, this is how we decided to build uh, the specs of the VR 180. And the last part of it is, all, uh, is guys like you, which are the content creation. Right. Uh, people who are actually using it, creating content, um, and enjoying this uh, this camera, and, and actually pushing also the industry forward by giving the uh, uh, the industry, uh, the, the manufacturers, the players, uh, remarks of how it should be better. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, it's interesting how everything plays together. Like you have to make the specs, and you have to look at uh, the, the 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 platforms how they want it to come together. It's very exciting to put everything together into like one or two devices, and especially you guys as not being a hardware company in the in the yes. first. In the first. <laughs> so you must a have learned company. so many things. Absolutely, and we're definitely going to talk about that more. And you know what's interesting? So I have uploaded these um, 360 and 180 degree 3D videos onto YouTube to show them to my audience, and they really, really liked what they saw. Now I get emails from them, from my, from my subscribers, and they tell me, hey, Sebastian, please do more 3D content because it makes them feel more closer to me. So, Absolutely. so it's just like as if they were there. So that's why I brought the camera actually here to Mobile World Congress. And later today, I'm going to try the HoloLens 2. And I'm going to film my first time with the HoloLens 2 with your oh, device. I'm very anxious to see that. And it, that's going very to be so exciting. So I'm going Absolutely. to put it there and I'm going to walk around in the room with the HoloLens 2. And this is going to go to YouTube. And I think that's going to be very, right. very exciting for people to see me try that for the first time in 3D. It's, I'm looking forward to that. Right. So this is going to be really, really cool. Yeah, amazing. So um, your lineup, the views, the views plus, and the um, views XR. That's it for this moment in time. Yes. Uh, well, the views one is still available for a lower price, uh, right. uh, uh, naturally. Uh, but yes, the, the main two products that are selling well are the views plus and the views XR. And quite frankly, the views XR more. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just so useful to yeah. bring everywhere. Useful so. and more affordable, so it uh, it approaches more people. Even if you're not really a VR enthusiast, you just want to uh, learn about it. It's a very, very uh, good entry level to create high quality content yeah. in VR, both in 360 and in VR 180, um, without knowing so much about uh, this technology. Mm -hmm. So it's a good uh, entry. While Views Plus requires some more uh, professional knowledge uh, right. to create, and, and again, you need to create it also with a computer. Right, exactly. Which yeah, this is also some yeah. interesting part that we can talk about. So um, you mentioned that actually there is still some stitching uh, to be done, right, for, for these kind of cameras. Right. So probably you can tell our listeners how that works. Let's say they, they buy this camera, yeah. right? they buy the Views XR, and uh, well, they are probably this John Smith from Alabama, <laughs> right? So, so how does he yeah. how does he put everything onto YouTube right. now? So you know, uh, for for this industry, back in 2016, there was a, um, a phrase. It was used to be the stitch is a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Because, <laughs> and excuse my French here. <laughs> no. um, it, it is, it it is, and it was, I would say, a major uh, challenge in this uh, industry, because. You need to uh, take, in, the, in our case, with the Views Plus, over the Views, it, with eight videos. You need to stitch eight videos together. Right. Eight separate videos together. And each camera sees 
things differently, yes. color-wise, uh, you know, white, uh, uh, white balance and all kinds of things differently. And so you need to take, in our case, camera number one, three, four, and seven, uh, uh, one, three, five, and seven, stitch them for panorama for left eye, two, four, six, and eight for the right eye. Each and every one of them sees things differently in colors and everything, so you need to adjust it so you have a clean view and where you don't know. So it is, cha and create things in 3D. So yeah. it was... Uh, and the it, audio in 3D as and, well. And the audio in 3D. So, the, uh, it, so it was very, very challenging, and, uh, and technology is emerging. There was a room for improvement. I must say that today, the leading players uh, in the market have resolved that. They have the computer vision capabilities to do that. And the stitch is no longer a bitch. It's, okay, a, good. it's, a, it's, it's very good in most cases to excellence. So you can deal with that. You can, you can always find some times where the stitch is. But it's no longer an issue as it was back in 2016 for okay. all players. So it's better now. It's yes. not a bitch anymore, but it's still not yet gold fed material. <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Now, uh, now there is a requirements for this uh, for these type of cameras, uh, much higher than just do a good stitching. Okay. Uh, it is also stabilization is very, very important because when you're walking in Taiwan on the beach, you're... Yeah, it was quite some shaky. Yes, you're, yeah. you're shaking and, you're, uh, and you want to see everything uh, stable. Right. And by the way, stabilization of VR 180 is completely different than stabilization of 360. Right. Because 360, you always want to have the horizon right. Always, yeah. But with VR 180, for example, I'm, I'm holding now the camera. What if I tilt it a little bit down? Yeah. What if I tilt it a little bit down? And maybe I want to do that, maybe I don't want to do that. Right. So who knows what the uh, photographer uh, intended. Did he want to do that? That's a good point. But when you're in, uh, in 360, you always have the same sphere, and you know that you, everything must be stabilized. Right. So that's another uh, oh, that challenge. But I can tell you that we are uh, helping our, our customers to make it extremely uh, uh, simple. So now they don't need to bother about the stitching because stitching is done inside the camera at least for 4K. But if they want the maximum resolution of 5.7K, and we do recommend yes. that, they do need to take it elsewhere, click on another button, and stitch it on a studio uh, uh, post-processing. Uh, right. But in general, it made, we it made sounds, it much more simple. Yeah, actually, um, for all the listeners and the viewers, actually, it, is, it sounds more complicated than it is. So basically, what you do, you have one one program on your computer on my laptop I brought it to Taiwan right and uh, it's called the view studio or what's the name of view it? studio View yeah. studio then um, you simply connect the, the camera to your computer and then in in this view studio you will see um, the, the file you, you you click on open and you click on render and that's right. it so right you don't have to yourself stitch anything it's just one button right right so if it sounds so so complicated or oh, you have to stitch it no you have to click on the on the button and then the computer will stitch it for you. But Sebastian, let yeah. me ask you a question. Okay. Can I ask you also a question? Yeah, of course. Do this you consider it. yourself as a regular consumer? Um, okay, let's say I'm an early adapter. I mean, I'm obviously an early adapter. <laughs> yes. So, so you are a prosumer, at yeah, least. Probably, Maybe yeah. even yes. a little bit pro a professional. Yeah. So for some people, just the fact that they need to download uh, a software to the computer, install it, and then connect it, and then understand a little bit what uh, 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 what to do. And then, of course, the software can do much more than just render. If you know, right. you yes, can yes. do fine stitching, you right. can do stabilization. Yeah. You need to know a little bit what you're doing. That's right. And we, we learned the hard way <laughs> that That's too complicated when already. you have a PC involved, it's, not, it's already not a pure consumer product. When okay. everything is automated, when everything is done in the mobile and Got automatic it. and it's one, just one button on an application, Yes, okay. but when you need to take it into a computer, we need to All do right. some processing, it's already going into a higher level. I'm not saying that uh, consumers cannot do that. Consumers can definitely, a lot of them can do that, yeah. but it's a different uh, level. Yes, you're right. If I would think that uh, my mother would have gotten the camera and <laughs> told her, okay, 5.7K, please stitch it on your computer. Exactly. Okay, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Probably exactly. That's exactly the probably point. Probably would have worked on her phone or on her iPad, but uh, no, not computer. Okay, now I got your point. 
But so, if you tell your mother, send me an email with your mobile, she will probably yeah, send you an email yeah, with mobile yeah, easily or a text on WhatsApp, right? That's right. So do you think this um, 5.7K stitching in the future can be done by a mobile phone? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, um, we, the ecosystem of, the, of this industry is moving forward very, very fast. And quite frankly, the, the um, capturing devices are not really the limitations. Capturing devices can do 8K, 12K easily. Mm -hmm. But we spoke about the distribution uh, channels. They are struggling with the 8K. Uh, YouTube already can support 8K, by the way, but uh, still they're reducing a little bit the resolution, the bitrate, in order to stream it uh, uh, fast. So the ecosystem, the uh, um, VR headset, that they don't have enough resolution to show a 5.7K, some of them. Um, the distribution channels, all these are uh, 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 str uh, struggling with that, but they are moving forward very, very fast, like the entire uh, uh, industry. So the entire ecosystem is moving forward and we are dependent upon each other. So you need to have a good uh, capturing device, but you also need to have a good VR headset to enjoy that. And you also need to have distribution channel to share that, right. etc. And uh, all of this is being built right now. This whole ecosystem is growing all together. So definitely, uh, correct. it's a very exciting time right now. Yes. So um, Views, Views Plus and Views XR. Um, what is your next play, or are you now satisfied here? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, all I can share is yes. that we're definitely going to have a very, very interesting next okay. next uh, uh, share, as you call it. Sure. Um, the roadmap, as you can imagine, is uh, one of the most, uh, the biggest secrets of every company. Of course. So until you are actually develop it, you are actually finishing and right. announcing it, and sharing it with the world, yeah. you can share it with everybody. But I can say that we are here to uh, to play uh, in this industry. We are here to continue on right. uh, uh, contributing our small share to this uh, uh, industry. And uh, I can promise very, very interesting products wow. in the future. Very much looking forward to that. So another question, how does it feel for you to kind of conquer a new industry with these kind of uh, 3D and 180 degree cameras because there are not so many players right in this industry. Right. Like you're one of the one of the only. There are a, a few. Yes, right? Right. You can have them in one hand, probably. Right. right? Even less. Even, <laughs> even less. Exactly. So um, you kind of like um, conquering uncharted territory here. Right. Like completely. I mean, for you, especially since you haven't been a hardware company. But um, how does it feel for you to try to conquer uncharted territory and uh, to have to be one of the only few cam? Uh, companies that's doing that? So uh, th there's there's two things related to answer that, that question. First of all, when we decided to go on the VR 180, it was a bit of a bet for us, a gamble, right. because we didn't know whether it's it's uh, this uh, trend will hold, it will succeed. Um, so yes, we, kn we, kn we wanted it a, a, a new field to conquer, as you call it. Uh, and we thought that th that, can, that works very well with our strategy of 3D. And uh, it's new field, maybe less comp competition. It's a good uh, uh, place to uh, play. Uh, however, you don't know whether it will work. You don't know whether it will be interesting to many uh, uh, many people. So, um, so when when we de uh, we decided to do that, uh, yes, at that time there was only one or two uh, players, and uh, and still not too many players. But what happened in 360 is actually quite the opposite. Okay. That time, a year ago, a year and a half ago, there were at least 40 to 45 players in the yeah, market. Right. Everybody had uh, their mother because made a relatively camera. the barrier, the, ent the entry barrier to this market is not so high. So if you have some capabilities of software, of hardware development, understanding of optics, you can introduce something into the market. And the key thing is to introduce a good thing to the market mm -hmm. and to win market share. And within time, because of the fierce competition back in 2016 and 17, um, the number of players actu actually reduced. Okay. So, but we do expect uh, that uh, the, uh, the the players that are still playing there in the market will introduce more cameras and will uh, we're you know fighting uh, for a larger market share. And with the VR 180, we think and we actually know there will be more players uh, in the market. Okay, yeah. So it's uh, always a very, very competitive uh, landscape. 
right. that we are uh, dealing with, um, and uh, and you, you you need to deal with that. So yeah, yeah sure. Well, very very exciting to try to yeah. compete in this new field. Yes. So now, Shahar, now we have talked a lot about your cameras, but now I want to know more about you. How about me? does? Yeah, about I'm you. the most boring part. No, in no, this, this, is, this is exciting, I think. <laughs> so, how does one become the CEO of of human eyes technologies? Okay. <laughs> so, first of all, actually, my background is in printing. This right. <laughs> I'm a printer. Yeah, you're a printer. Well, okay. I used to own a printing house in Jerusalem. Okay. Uh, it's a, it was a large business of printing, and uh, and how the hell a guy of that handling printing is uh, finding himself a CEO of a consumer electronics right. uh, uh, device? So how did you make I it think, on MRTV? I think we had a hint at the at the beginning of this discussion, telling the history of Humanize, right. which is now also part of my history because right. I've been working for Humanize for 10 years already no no but time. only four years as its CEO okay so when I when I worked uh, for the company as its COO I was um, mostly in charge of the uh, uh, the printing uh, uh, part of it the logistic the business development uh, etc because of my background in printing okay but um, but um, uh, so so you know the high-tech industry is very very dynamic you have to deal with dynamic changes. If you hate changes, you're in the wrong place. Right. If you, and, and for me, I embrace changes. I embrace dynamic uh, uh, places. What scares me most is that I know 20 years from now that I'll do the same thing. <laughs> right. that, nothing scares me more than that. Right. So I like that. And um, uh, when, uh, when, when Mr. Landa, Mr. Benny Landa, asked me to let's think of the next step uh, of humanizing, actually, I enjoyed the idea of not having a solution for the graphic arts. That it's a good time, after maybe 15 years in this industry, to find a different uh, uh, industry, not only the graphic arts uh, all the time. So, um, I, I obviously I was out of my comfort zone completely. Yes. Uh, luckily, I'm surrounded by great people that uh, can uh, compensate of my lack of knowledge in hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, for example, is sitting here at the MWC with us, mm -hmm. talking with people here, and uh, uh, allowing, allowing us as the, as the company to uh, enjoy the different uh, knowledges of the, of the group, from hardware to software to business side, uh, etc. So I found myself in this, uh, in, in this industry. Wow, very cool. So. Um were you already CEO when you introduced the idea of uh, we're making hardware now? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, as I said, the the uh, the, the startup uh, industry in Israel is very very uh, uh, dynamic. Yeah, it's a, so a very strong startup. Industry. Humanize is already the my, my, the fifth company that I've been working with. Okay. Uh, for two companies as CEO and two other companies as uh, as VP of business development and okay. sales and stuff like that for business stuff. Right. So um, uh, so actually, Humanize is, uh, is is already the third company that I'm working as as its uh, CEO, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that this one will be a major uh, success. <laughs> and it right. looks very very good so far. Okay. So um, at the time when uh, your company made the shift to ha to making hardware. At that time, were you already the CEO? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, yeah. um, <laughs> in a way, you can say that um, uh, there is the company un until 2015, right? And from 2015 uh, uh, and on, because the company completely changed its identity, right? Its market, its products, and uh, I, and I, as I said, um, I was uh, asked by the board of directors to to choose that and. Um, um, so I, I feel in a way this, uh, if you will, we call it humanized VR, <laughs> not just humanized. Uh, the humanized VR section is its, uh, its founder. Okay, so, yeah. got it, cool. So now we all want to know more about the challenges that you had to overcome from uh, being a software company <laughs> to becoming now a hardware manufacturer. I mean, this is so exciting, this is so interesting. Hardware is very hard. Like I've mm. spoken with so many people in the industry. Later, yeah. I'm going to speak with the Vario guys from Finland who make this new headset, right? It's tough. Whenever I speak with hardware manufacturers, it's tough 
to make these things, it's so expensive to come up with the molding, everything, everything is expensive, right? And it's right. like a huge risk to make these things because it's not like um, you would have like a big um, software model of, of selling selling up some software, like, okay, Oculus has it, but like like you, for example, you have to make money with the hardware, right? So, so yes, tell us, yes. how, how did you manage to make hardware suddenly? I mean, uh, you need experience. You, you had to buy the people who know this stuff or you had them already tell us about this part. Okay, so <laughs> what was required is very, very, in one simple sentence, which was not simple to do, is change the DNA of the company. Right, Because, wow. yes, you're right. Uh, software is so different because it's, it, you can change it, you can fix things, you can upgrade things and everything. With hardware, processes are so much slower. If you make uh, mistakes with hardware, uh, it's extremely expensive, and uh, you need to redo things and go back again uh, to the design board, and then uh, you lose, in, in every case like that, you, you can lose up to sometimes even years, mm -hmm. or six months or seven months. So what, I, what we had to do, and. And at that time, I, did, I didn't really understand that. I thought that, oh, yes, hardware, okay, we will change. Uh, well, let's make a camera. Yeah, the circuit, uh, okay, we'll change it. <laughs> no, not so easy. But what I did understand is that I don't understand anything about it. And, um, and what we did is we took a, a great team led by our COO, uh, Oni, who's uh, joined the company back in 2016. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has a vast experience of uh, hardware uh, design and uh, development. And... Um, what Ronnie said was an interesting thing. He said, since we're an Israeli company, we will not manufacture it, most right. likely. Right. Um, uh, even though we considered to do that in Israel, but uh, we found out that um, it would be too expensive uh, and probably not as good when you, when you ma manufacture such a product. Uh, certainly not only in Israel, but also in Germany. Which, uh, it's not the right place to manufacture these type of products and not in the US, uh, it's, it's only in Asia. Right. So what uh, Ronnie said, since we are not going to actually do the manufacturing, we need to build a very, very strong supply chain. If you want to build a very strong supply chain, you need to have a very strong team, not necessarily too big, mm -hmm. but a very, very strong team that can do a lot, uh, a, a lot of things. So, so we took, uh, Five. We have five guys, only five guys in this team that is managing our supply chain uh, all over the world. And I, I can share with you a little secret here. Please. I'm sure that you will not tell to anyone. No, no, Don't I tell. Won't. Okay, it's just, just between you and me. Yeah. <laughs> we are manufacturing this little uh, uh, small device of the Views XR in five countries, actually. Really? Wow. Five countries are contributing to this, uh, uh, to this. So it's not as if we are just... Israel and China. Okay. No, there is uh, there is software. I will not say where everywhere, right, or, right. Uh, but there is software. There is application. There is uh, the NPI, the new product introduction process that you are doing when you design such a product. And then there is actual uh, manufacturing. So yes, manufacturing is not a secret. It's been manufactured in China, but in the process, the firmware, the application, the NPI, and obviously Israel is one of them. Yeah. Um, it is uh, is being planned uh, in another four countries outside of uh, Israel and China. Actually, another three outside of Israel and China. So um, um, only when we realized uh, uh, that uh, we we need to leverage on uh, capabilities, on existing technologies, on existing uh, supply chains, on the know-how, we don't need to invent the wheel uh, for for a, a, a hardware product. We don't need to invent everything right so for example lenses right you need to go and find a, a very good player in this market that will know to build and design a lens according to the specs that we need mm -hmm. and the same goes on and on and on to every part of the cameras all right so, so a strong a strong team with uh, with the capabilities of handling uh, a, a lot of uh, a, a technologies and industries from electronics to optics, a, a lot of know-how in this uh, small team, and they can leverage their knowledge and manage all those uh, supply chain, all the partners that are helping us produce this amazing product. Wow, very interesting. 
I'm still am wondering, tell us a bit more, how did the first meeting look like when the first meeting of building the first views? It must be so interesting. How many people were in the room and then how did it look like? Okay, we're making this camera now, what to do? Tell us a bit more. So, <laughs> how uh, was the uh, meeting, uh, if you can remember? Oh, d definitely. <laughs> you know, I will, uh, I will start with the design yeah. because we had right. something in mind. Okay. And we went to this uh, uh, and we did not have how, uh, know how it would look. We knew that we wanted it small, we knew that we wanted it stereoscopic, and we knew that we wanted it uh, a full spherical capturing. That's all. And we thought probably it will be a ball, like, like yeah, the Nokia like uh, Ozo, like all other VR cameras that are, are now. And um, so we, we, we started this uh, uh, design company, and then they, they took some time, and then we went to the first meeting uh, around the table, and they came with one slide, and they showed us the camera. They actually, they showed us an apple, a square apple. Okay. Have you, have you seen the square apple? Um, no, not really. <laughs> not really. It's a, can you imagine an, uh, an apple? But it is a, a bit squarish, not completely square, okay, a bit yeah. squarish. Okay, got it. And, uh, Edges. And that, that, was, that was what they thought about it uh, when they thought about the, the first views camera. And then they clicked on next, yeah. the next slide, and we looked at the views camera, last time it was a yellow uh, views camera, and we looked at it, and there was silence in the room. It was like this already, like a flat. Very, very, very flat. Sim similar uh, like to a disc. Actually, this camera, okay. but obviously, we, we uh, from the first version, we, you have to continue on and fine tune it. Of course. But when we looked at it, there was a silence in the room. We were shocked, and then. And then I said, yes, this is what we want yeah, okay. to do. We want this. Yeah, <laughs> we want this. Um, okay. They hit it right in the point, Perfect. right where we wanted it. So you were uh, lucky with that design company. Oh, yes. Yeah? And they were still working with them. They also did the Views oh, XR. Okay. And uh, maybe it's time uh, to say their name. It's uh, Taga, okay. uh, a, a very good industrial design uh, company in Tel Aviv. So uh, and they, they, they deserve the credit. So. Um, but then, okay, uh, the design is nice. With all due respect to design, you need to have the guts of the camera uh, right. doing. And this is where we uh, uh, struggled. We, we, we started taking all, the, all those consultants and everything until we built our own team that is capable of doing that, finding the right manufacturer that is willing to take that and, and support us with uh, building that, uh, that camera. Wow, yeah. so interesting. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. must be very exciting to, to see uh, the progress from sitting in that first meeting with a design camera, uh, with a design company, and then like uh, sitting here with the products and selling them to the world. It must be a good feeling, right? You know, um, <laughs> maybe it's a bit uh, stupid on my, uh, on my end, but I was so excited yeah. when I saw the first circuit of yes. the camera shaped by the shape of the camera. It's not right. just a regular circuit that you put in because we had to use the maximum form of the form factor. So the circuit, the electronic board of the uh, camera was uh, had to use this, uh, the entire uh, shape of the camera so it looks exactly the same thing. And when it was ready with all the components, with all the, uh, you know, the DSPs and the memory th th all, all together, I was so excited about that, and when it's actually really uh, worked, uh, so when I spoke with other potential partners, of so this is the <laughs> this is the electrical board. Like, why are you showing us this electrical? Board? I'm just I'm proud. I'm just proud to show you yeah. this electrical board because uh, it is so unique and so uh, special. But maybe it's a good uh, time. We have a little room of the museum of the views uh, uh, camera. The museum. The museum. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, because uh, because at the beginning we had to continue, uh, work on the uh, software or the stitching and everything, but we did not have a camera. So how do you develop a software if you don't have a camera? So what do you do? You buy cameras and you place them yeah. uh, uh, together at the same distance, right. and this is how you do that. So we have a bunch. We thought maybe 16 cameras, then a, a 12. And then we thought, okay, if we want to really make it uh, uh, affordable then it must be uh, the minimum number of lenses. And we realized in order to create real 3D, it must be at least uh, eight cameras. We cannot go down to six or four for various reasons. Again, I will not bore the, your listeners with that. So we built a lot of rigs with regular cameras that we bought, similar resolution, 
and created those manually uh, in, in order to build that. And then the next phase was to, to connect our own camera module mm -hmm. to this circuit board and put it in the form factor that we uh, wanted. Very nice. Yeah. Can you still remember the day when the first use camera was completely finished in the retail box, everything, and you saw that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> There's two days that I remember. The first one, once we agreed on what would be the final design, we, we did a, a 3D printed uh, views. Because when you see it in slides, it's nice. But once we managed to build one time, obviously it looks ugly a little bit, you know, it's a 3D printing uh, output, but uh, it was blue, I remember. We, um, and uh, the first time that you see the camera staring at you, look at that. Yes. Now I'm, I'm, I'm putting the camera looking at you, right? Yeah, it it actually has, has a, a look, right? Yes. It's looking at you. Um, so the first time I saw that was a very, very excited uh, uh, moment. For But yes, I agree with you. Going into the manufacturing uh, facility and seeing, no, actually not only one, seeing the first camera shr after the shrink machine, which is the last machine putting in some plastic mm -hmm. around it, it is very, very exciting going into the boxes. Well, at that time, thousands of thousands of people have been waiting for the camera for months because right. of the delay. Uh, and there were patients enough to, uh, uh, to, to get the camera. So from that uh, meeting with the design company where you said this, <laughs> until this really came out in this retail boxes, how much time was between those two days? So uh, that was, uh, um, the design was it late 2015, finished. And we thought that it will take us 11 months to uh, complete the development. The, this is the reason why we promised the customers on October uh, 2010. And we also wanted, uh, you know, Q4. Uh, we thought that it can be a, a nice gift at that time. Um, but uh, as I said already, we managed to release it only in March 2017, late March 2017. So from the time we of, uh, let's say, of October 2015, Until uh, until uh, so only a year and a half. Okay, that's, so that's relatively, okay. relatively so, for not so long a, a company with yeah. out a lot of uh, experience in that, uh, we, we worked extremely hard at that yeah. time. Uh, extremely <laughs> hard. There was a lot of pressure. Yes. But one thing I can say, I'm enjoying also the role. Not only the goal of right. to succeed and, uh, and and make a difference and become uh, a major player, but also enjoying the role. It's a. Uh, I think it's important for everything. Not for cameras. Not for work. If you're enjoying what you're doing, then you can do it better. Right, If and longer. And longer, exactly. exactly. That's amazing. Exactly. Cool. So now I would like to talk a bit more about um, financing, such, such, doing such hardware. So is it like you, you simply had the funds because it's not a startup company anymore, humanized, uh, humanized technologies? No, 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 no. We, 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 we were still, raise we were still a, a startup company. Okay. Uh, Back in 2012 and, uh, and 13, 14, 15, oh, uh, we're still a startup company. But we were uh, very privileged and fortunate to have Landa Ventures as our major shareholder, okay. owned by Mr. Benny Landa. Benny Landa is one of the top entrepreneurs in, uh, in Israel. Uh, as I said, uh, building uh, Indigo, known as the father of digital printing in the world, Everybody in the printing industry, everybody know, knows uh, who's uh, Mr. Landa. Um, and he was, uh, uh, he has a, a, a vision. He, he, in many cases, he, he supports products that are sometimes too early, okay. um, are, are, are premature. So he was helping us and was patient enough until we, we were able to improve things, until we were able to uh, release the second camera and the third camera and supporting us. So in a way we were privileged enough, so I did not have to uh, chase every, every six months for another uh, a round of investment. So we had to, uh, the only thing I had to do is uh, to uh, get Mr. Landers on board, convince him that this is a, a good idea, Uh, uh, and uh, we were lucky enough to, to get that. So fundraising is, uh, was a relatively uh, uh, easy thing. I must, I must say that it is, we knew that from the beginning that it is expensive to develop these type of products. 
uh, and it's not so simple, but uh, we were supported by Mr. Uh, Landa about that. Oh, that's amazing to hear because yeah. very often it's not so easy to find funding and you have to yeah, run after it and spend lots of um, your time and energy on trying to get the funding right. So this part was not so tough. I mean, it was probably tough as well, but you had this great support from this visionary. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, I, and I know, you know, we, we, we became friends in this industry. So I know right. other CEOs, other founders of other cameras yes. in the market, uh, uh, at least as good as, uh, as the Views camera. Uh, but the only thing that did not have is the right uh, funding. And you need, for small startup, you need to have the right funding. So you can either see large companies playing in this market where they don't have a, a funding issue or startups that were managed to raise a lot of money uh, uh, in it. Uh, and the small, unfortunately, the small companies that had a great uh, uh, cameras or a great uh, products, uh, they simply could not raise enough uh, money and they had to shut down. This is what happened in the last uh, 18 months. So from 45 players that I mentioned before, back in 2016, 17, you can, I think, find less than 20 that are uh, viable in the market and uh, and actually less than 10 that are leading leading the market. Wow. So it's this is challenging. Very, this is definitely a big challenge. So that brings us to the last section of our interview. We would like to, I would like to talk with you about um, your take on the VR industry. Mm -hmm. So it would be great if you if you could share with us your thoughts of uh, where the industry is right now, what are the challenges and until when do we have to wait until this really becomes mass market and everyone and their mothers right. buy your camera? Right. So, um, when I w back in 2015, when there was the big hype uh, after the uh, acquisition of uh, Oculus and after uh, uh, so many companies entered that world, you know, Samsung and Ricoh and other companies uh, uh, were leading, uh, leading that uh, process, we... Uh, they all, we, we, I remember we used to say in 2015, 2016, this is the year of the mass adoption of VR. Right. In 2016, 2017 is definitely for sure, for sure the mass adoption of the, uh, uh, VR. In 2017, we, I think the entire industry realized that it's going to take uh, more time. And they said in 2018 there will be an improvement. Yeah, for sure. 2018. <laughs> Ready Player One is coming out. Yeah, yeah but now. The improvement. Not. Uh, no. <laughs> we're no longer talking about mass adoption in 2018. But right. yes, what we see is uh, while it takes longer, there is a very steady and clear progress. So no, not maybe not 400 percent every year. Not the hockey stick yet. Not the hockey stick yet, but definitely increasing by. Uh, high double digit uh, okay. uh, numbers every year sure. um, and the number of players are reducing all right so okay. it's this is a good thing not necessarily <laughs> depends for whom yeah but <laughs> if you're if you have enough um, breath <laughs> yes. to survive that then definitely for the companies that, that that have enough resources it's a good it's it's good news um, so uh, the minute Mass adoption will take place only when the entire ecosystem is ready. If one part of the ecosystem is missing, it will not be uh, uh, good enough. So, so for example, uh, we mentioned uh, on the capturing things, there is a frame rate, resolution, speed, high, uh, high quality stitching, high quality stabilization, everything. It is 70% down the road, I would say, because our feeling is that once all cameras will be around 8K and obviously good stitching and, uh, um, and high quality uh, images, capturing will no longer be a, a limitation. But that's not enough. We also need to make sure that our friends from the uh, viewing devices will also be able to show and run um, good, uh, uh, good content. Um, the distribution channels that I mentioned Rather than killing the quality of, uh, of the videos, uh, they need actually to embrace it and support it at the maximum bitrate and the maximum resolution. Uh, it will uh, uh, also help. But simplicity is another thing. That goes back to the content creators, which rather than being only BBC, CNN, and you guys, 
but also John Smith from Alabama, remember him? Uh, it has to be extremely simple also for him. And it's almost there. It's getting there. Uh, simple and high quality uh, of the entire uh, ecosystem. I would find, I would probably be stupid of me to say 2020 is the year <laughs> after all the, the, the history that I said. But yes, we're hoping that uh, 2019 and 2020 would be a major uh, change. Bear in mind, we are in the Mobile World Congress now. Every other word here is 5G. 5G. Yeah, you right. can't say anything without saying, good morning 5G, yeah. 5G, good night. You know, yeah. it's only about 5G here. Yes, 5G is, uh, is a major player here because remember, we spoke about sharing uh, the content and if everything it will reside in the cloud, it will be easy uh, to handle that rather than taking it into memories and computers and everything. Everything is in the cloud. You're able to, to uh, edit the content, to create the content in the cloud and share it easily at a high quality and high speed in real time. Um, that definitely can be a major step forward towards uh, mass adoption. Oh, that makes so much sense. So in your opinion, it's the sharing at this moment in time, which is not still yet there yet. Right. Sharing, part. sharing is one of the biggest uh, uh, limited ease of use uh, uh, in sharing. I don't think that the capturing devices and the viewing devices are, they used to be uh, uh, the major uh, uh, block for mass adoption. But no, you, see, you see the VUSXR, you see our competitors yeah. uh, doing a great job in, in making things simply in high quality videos. Right. Uh, the ability to um, uh, create the content is no longer uh, a huge limitation. But yes, sharing and the entire uh, uh, ecosystem uh, is, uh, uh, is a limitation right now okay. for that. So 2020, we've heard it from <laughs> Jahar. 2020 is the time. So probably yeah. in 2020, I'm going to sit here at Mobile World Congress <laughs> with you again, and then we'll have another talk and see if actually it became reality. One thing I can tell you, it will be a bigger market. We can call together John Smith from Alabama. Yeah, okay. Say, do you, did you <laughs> buy a 360 camera? Right. If he says no, then I lost. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's do this. We'll, in two years, we're going to randomly call John Smith in Alabama <laughs> and see what happens. And I must uh, say, uh, so excuse for all John Smiths from Alabama <laughs> yeah, right now. For watching this I apologize right now. in <laughs> advance. Right. <laughs> Shaha, this has been an amazing talk. So much insight into what you do with the cameras, so much knowledge about the industry. I can just say thank you so much for joining this podcast. Thank you very, very much. It was, it was a ple true pleasure. Pleasure talking with you Great. always. Thank you. Yeah, so I really enjoyed this talk. I hope that you enjoyed it as well, as much as we did here. <laughs> we enjoyed it quite a lot. I doubt that. <laughs> at, at Mobile World Congress. And well, I'll be very happy if um, you also join me for the next episode of the People in XR podcast. And of course, if you like this, why don't you leave a review at your podcast provider of choice. And that's everything that I got for you today. See you in the next episode.